Hello class. Today what we are going to talk about is proving lines to be parallel. Now in the previous lesson we talked about all these angle theorems, right? Corresponding angles, alternate interior angles, alternate exterior, same side, interior, same side, exterior, all of those, right? And we noticed that for each one of these theorems they all start the same way if two lines are parallel. If you have two parallel lines, if you have two parallel lines, two parallel lines, two parallel lines. In all of these, you have to already know that your lines are parallel. And so the question becomes, what if they're not? What if I want to use corresponding angles theorem, but I don't know if my lines are parallel? So what we need is a way to prove that these lines are parallel so that we can use our theorem. And that's what we're going to talk about today. All right. Now, you will notice that these theorems here look very, very similar to the theorems we had last time, right? We have corresponding angles theorem, and today we're looking at corresponding angles converse. We had alternate interior angles theorem, today we have alternate interior angles converse. They're very, very similar. Well, hopefully you remember what a converse is. We did talk about that a couple of weeks ago. And converse, you remember, just changes the order of our conditional statement. So in the original theorem, it says if two parallel lines are cut by a transversal, then the pairs of corresponding angles are congruent. In the converse, you notice, it says if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So in the original, it says if the lines are parallel, then the corresponding angles are congruent. In the converse, it takes it the other way around, and it says if the angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. All right? So it takes it the opposite direction. So since we know that angle 2 and angle 6 are corresponding, because they're in the same position, both in the top and right side of the intersection, and since they're congruent, that means J must be parallel to K. All right? Same thing with alternate interior angles converse. If two lines are cut by transversal so that alternate interior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So since 4 is congruent to 5, J is parallel to K. All right. Alternate exterior angles. If two lines are cut by transversal so that alternate exterior angles are, again, congruent, so angle 1 and angle 8 are congruent, therefore the lines are going to be parallel. J is parallel to K. Right. And then we have consecutive interior angles, which you recall, I gave you another name for that. We could also call these same side interior angles. And here, if two lines are cut by transversal, so that same side interior angles are not congruent, these need to be supplementary. So angle 3 is supplementary to angle 5, and therefore line J is parallel to line K. Now, there is another one which we don't have because the textbook, for some reason, does not like same side exterior angles. They're very useful, and so we do have a theorem for them. And since we had a theorem that worked, we also have a converse that works. Same side exterior angles converse. And this is just like the same uh, consecutive interior angles converse if two lines are cut by a transversal so that the same side exterior angles are supplementary, then the lines are parallel. So we're going to go ahead and write that down. So, if the angles are supplementary, that means the lines are parallel. So, what we have is if angle 1 is supplementary to angle 7, Line J is parallel to line K. So that's another one. I don't know why these are in the textbook. I do not know why the whoever made the textbook doesn't like same side exterior angles. It's useful. We can use it. So we're going to. All right. So back over here. We do have one completely new theorem here. And this is the transitive property of parallel lines. And you all remember the transitive property of equality or the transitive property of congruence it says if two things are congruent to the same thing, then they are congruent to each other, right? Same thing is true with parallel lines. 
if two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. So since P is parallel to Q and R is parallel to Q, then P is parallel to R. Okay? Transitive property of parallel lines, just like transitive property of congruence. If two lines are parallel to the same line, then they are parallel to each other. All right, so let's take a look at this. Let's see what we can do with these converses. All right, so let's start up here with one and two. Find the value of x that will make line s parallel to line t, and it wants us to explain our reasoning. Okay, so on number one, we have these two angles that have x in them. And we don't know that line s is parallel to line t, but we want to know what would make them parallel to each other. And so looking at these two angles, these are alternate exterior angles. They're on alternate sides of the transversal, and they are outside of the two lines that are being cut. And if these two angles, what do they need to be? They need to be congruent, right? Alternate interior, alternate exterior angles have to be congruent. And so if we make these two equal to each other, have the same measure, then that means the lines will be parallel. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to say that 3 times x minus 8 equals 2 times x plus 10 because the alternate exterior angles converse says that if these two angles are congruent, then the lines will be parallel. So let's make them congruent. Let's make these equal to each other. So now we just solve this. Step one is, of course, to distribute on both sides. So I have 3x minus 24 equals 2x plus 20. Then we want to get our x's to one side. So let's subtract 2x from both sides, giving me x minus 24 equal to 20. Let's move the 24 over there. So we will add 24 because we're subtracting. So we need to add to get rid of that. And now x equals 44. And we use the alternate exterior angles converse to do that. Not the alternate exterior angles theorem. Because for the theorem, we would have had to already know that they were parallel, and we don't. So we are trying to make them parallel. Now what we're saying is, since the angles are congruent, that means the lines must be parallel. Okay, so same thing over here. We want to find x so that these lines are parallel, s and t. Now, these are not alternate interior angles to see. These are interior angles, and they are on the same side of the transversal, so same side interior angles, or consecutive, if you like that. And consecutive interior angles need to be supplementary in order to force the lines to be parallel. So that means these two angles have to add up to 180 degrees. So that means our 4x minus 12 plus this 120 have to add up to 180 degrees. And we did this with the same side interior angles theorem. Or if you prefer the consecutive, which I'm going to abbreviate because I don't have room, consecutive interior angles and not the theorem. The theorem says we already know the lines are parallel. We don't know they're parallel. We want to make them parallel. We are going to use the converse, which can be abbreviated C-O-N-V. And now we need to solve this. So step one, combine like terms. Gives me 4x plus, what is that, minus 12 would be 8. So 108 equals 180. Subtract the 108 from both sides. And so now 4x equals 72. Divide by 4. And x is equal to, what is that, 18. And there we go. And we use the consecutive interior angles converse, or if you prefer, the same side interior angles converse. All right, same thing. All right, so there's those. Let's take a look at this next set. We need to decide, is there enough information to prove that line P is parallel to line Q? And if so, we need to state what theorem we would use. So let's take a look at this. Number three, P and Q. So we have some angles marked here, right? 
you have these two angles marked. And these two angles are on alternate sides of the transversal. They are outside of our two lines. So those would be alternate exterior angles. And let's see, they are congruent in alternate exterior angles. So if the alternate exterior angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So alternate exterior angles are congruent. So yes, we do have enough information. And this is the alternate exterior angles converse. Not the theorem. This is the converse. All right. Okay, so what about the next one? We have some things there. Hmm. So we have a measure of x and a measure of 180 minus x. Okay, so let's see. These are on the same side of the transversal. They are on the interior. So these are same side interior angles or consecutive interior angles, if you prefer. And consecutive interior angles, as we said up here, need to be supplementary. They have to add up to 180. So let's see if these add up to 180, and let's find out. So let's see, we have x plus 180 minus x equals 180. See if they're supplementary. And yeah, because when we combine like terms, we have x minus x, right? And so that cancels out, and we just end up with 180 equals 180. So... That works. So we yes, we do have enough information by the same side interior angles converse. Remember, the theorems are used if you already know the lines are parallel and you want to prove something by the angles. The converse is used if you don't know the lines are parallel, but you already know something about the angles and you want to prove the lines parallel. All right, so let's flip this over. We've got two more to look at. So here we have a map of the United States. It shows lines of latitude, lines of longitude. And so lines of latitude run horizontally, because you remember the latitude, they're lazy, they're laying down. Lines of longitude are the long ones that run all the way from North Pole to South Pole. Those run vertically. So let's see. Question A, are the lines of latitude parallel? And we need to explain. So let's take a look at what we have congruent here. We have some angles there. So let's take a look at these angles here. These ones marked with three arcs, so that means they're congruent because they both have the same arcs. So here, this is my transversal, right there. And so that's my transversal. So we're looking at line C and line D. And these are in the same position for their intersection. They're both in the top right. So they are corresponding, and the corresponding angles are congruent. So if corresponding angles are congruent, then the lines are parallel. So that means that C is parallel to D by the corresponding angles converse. Okay, let's check the other lines. Let's see if they're parallel. So let's see here. We have these two are marked with as congruent because they both have two arcs, and that would be looking at line C and line B with this transversal here. And alternate exterior angles are congruent. So that means that the lines are parallel by the alternate exterior angles converse. And let's check these up here. Well, here we have two congruent angles because they only have they have the same arc markings. And so here we're looking at A and B, and we have alternate interior angles. So those are congruent because A is parallel to B. So by the alternate interior Alternate interior angles converse, those are parallel. But the question is, are all of them parallel? All right? Well, I know A is parallel to B, B is parallel to C, and C is parallel to D. And so over here, right, transitive property of parallel lines. If two lines are parallel to the same line, they're parallel to each other. So since A is parallel to B and B is parallel to C, that means A is parallel to C. And since B is parallel to C and C is parallel to D, that means B is parallel to D. So that means, yes, these are all parallel to each other. A is parallel to B, as we proved with this one. B is parallel to C, as we proved there. And C is parallel to D. So all four of them are parallel to each other by the transitive property of parallel lines. 
to the rock. Okay, so now let's take a look at the lines of longitude. Uh, so lines of longitude, these are the ones going north and south, uh, vertical lines. And so let's see here. Let's go from, well, we don't have, okay, so angle here to that one there, right? Because we want to go from one, per, one vertical line to the other vertical line. And we do have some same side interior angles. So those should be supplementary, but we don't have any markings letting us know that they are. So we don't know. We can't use that. Let's try this one out here. Okay, so here going from this angle with three tick marks to this angle with two arcs. So those are alternate interior angles. And for that to work, those have to be congruent, right? And they are marked as not being congruent. So these are not congruent, which means our lines of longitude are not parallel. So we're going to say no. Why? Because we have some alternate interior angles here. The angles are not congruent, therefore the lines are not parallel. Okay, so what do we have next? Number seven. We have a proof. Everybody's favorite. We like proofs. Proofs are fun. So, you're given that Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and that angle 2 is congruent to angle 3. We want to prove that angle 3 is congruent to angle 4. Uh, so, we know these two are congruent. We know these two are congruent. So, we're trying to get 3 congruent to 4, which will work if we can get some parallel lines going on here. All right? So, Let's see, hmm, but we don't know that C is parallel to D, do we? And what about A and B? Well, we don't know that A is parallel to B, but if we can get it, if I can get angle 1 congruent to angle 4, angle 1 is already congruent to angle 2, and if angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, and angle 2 is congruent to angle 3, I know that angle 1 and 3 are congruent, so if I can get 1 congruent to 4, then I can say, since they're both congruent to 1, 3 is congruent to 4. All right, so let's take a look, see if we can find, get angle 1 congruent to angle 4. Okay. So let's just let's start with this. If these two here are corresponding angles, right? So since those are corresponding angles, if I know that A is parallel to B, then that will mean my corresponding angles are congruent. All right, so let's do that. That'll get us there. So Oh, but I don't have A as parallel to B. So can I get A parallel to B? Well, I do know that 2 and 3 are congruent, and these are inter alternate interior angles. So if my alternate interior angles are congruent, that means my lines will be parallel, and then I can say 1 is congruent to 4. So let's do that. We will start with this given here. The 2 is, well, we'll go ahead and write them both down. So angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. I'm going to do this in a two-column proof. All right, so I have statements. I didn't give myself a lot of room here, but that's okay. How do I know one is parallel to, congruent to two? Because it's given to me. And I'm going to go ahead and put this in a different line. Angle two is congruent to angle three because that is also given to me. Okay, so since two is congruent to three, that means line A is parallel to line B because of alternate interior angles converse. Right, so now I have A is parallel to B. Let me put lines in between this so they don't run together. So now, since A is parallel to B, I can say that 1 is congruent to 4 because those are corresponding angles and the lines are parallel. So this is the corresponding angles, not the converse this time, this is the actual theorem, corresponding angles theorem. Okay, so now we're going to get our transitive stuff going on here. So 1 is congruent to 2, and 2 is congruent to 3. So that means angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 because of the transitive property. And since 1 is congruent to 3 and 1 is congruent to 4, we can say that... 3 is congruent to 4. 4 
again by the transitive property. And there, it's not too bad. I do want to go ahead and do this. It doesn't ask us to, but I want to do this as a flow proof, just so we can look at this, just so we can see this, because it's good to see flow proofs again, because this does get a little bit mixed up. So here we go. I'm going to take this basic, same basic order. Remember, with flow proofs, our statements go in boxes. So we actually started working with this part. Didn't we? So we will say angle two is congruent to angle 3 because that was given and because of that we had this line A is parallel to line B by the alternate interior angles converse and because of that I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4 because of the corresponding angles there and I am abbreviating down here just to save some space. Okay, so now we're going to jump down and use our other given piece there. Angle 1 is congruent to angle 2, because that was given. And because of these two together, I know that angle 1 is congruent to angle 3 by the transitive property. And then I'm going to take these two together and say angle 3 is congruent to angle 4, again by the transitive property. So that one did get a little bit messy, but it's still kind of nice and having it as a flow chart instead of having it just as this, because we jump from here to there to there to there. And so flow chart is a little bit easier to follow how it goes. All right, so just to go over this again, the converses are to prove that lines are parallel if you know the angles are congruent or supplementary. The theorems are used to prove the line angles are congruent if you already know the lines are parallel. So, if you know the angles are uh, the lines are parallel, theorem say the angles are congruent or supplementary. If you know the angles are supplementary or congruent, converse to prove the lines are parallel. All right, hopefully you found that useful, and I will see you in the next video.